Longleaf Pine, Pinus palustris, the tree that built the South and America. Longleaf was found from the coast of Virginia south through two-thirds of the peninsula of Florida and then west to eastern Texas. Over its range, longleaf was the dominant tree. Data from witness trees at the turn of the beginning of the 20th century show that 90% of the witness trees recorded for Escambia and Covington counties in Alabama were longleaf pine. Longleaf was able to form climax or subclimax forests of pure stands. Its ability to regenerate effectively underneath itself in gaps created by natural disturbances allowed these forests to remain on and dominate the landscape. Timber exploitation, fire exclusion, and the conversion of forest lands to fast growing species like loblolly and slash pine spelled the end of longleaf's dominance across the southeastern landscape. Across the southeast of today, there's a renewed interest in planting longleaf pine. Many land managers and landowners are interested in longleaf not only for its valuable timber products, but also for its ecosystem benefits and its particular benefits to wildlife. As longleaf begins to become part of the ecosystem in the southeast again, there's a renewed interest in uh, grazing livestock and silvopasture systems underneath these longleaf pine forests. These agroforestry systems provide promise as ecological based enterprises for forest dependent regions where generating income from the land and creating economic opportunities can be a challenge. There is often much confusion and concern regarding the inventory of agroforestry systems. For this project, we have compared a fixed radius plot inventory to a 100% tally of a longleaf pine agroforestry system at the Haas Demonstration Forest in Atmore, Alabama. 100% tallies are both time consuming and expensive. A combination of high costs and the need for timely information greatly limit their application in forestry situations. This experiment was conducted to provide information on inventory silver pasture systems and shed light on the question of whether or not 100% inventories are necessary in silver pasture inventorying situations. We hypothesize that a, that a systematic line and plot inventory, one typically used in forest inventories, will provide an accurate and much more efficient estimate in silver pasture systems than a 100% tally. On March 2, 2013, a 100% cruise was conducted at a silver pasture site on the EA Haas Experimental Forest in Atmore, Alabama. The site was a 6.49 acre stand of longleaf pine planted in double rows at a 6 by 10 foot spacing with 40 foot alleyways between the double rows. The ends of each row were recorded using a Nomad resource grade GPS unit and an azimuth for each double row was recorded to the nearest degree using a handheld compass. Distance between each tree within its row and diameter at breast height were then measured for all trees within the stand. All measurements were taken using an auger's tape and recorded to the nearest tenth of an inch for DVH and tenth of a foot for distance. In some cases, trees had not yet grown to four and a half feet tall. The diameters of these trees were noted as being zero inches at DVH and alive. Data from the cruise tally cards was then organized in Microsoft Excel spreadsheets and transferred to a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet created by Mr. John Gilbert that used the coordinates of each row taken by GPS, the azimuth of each row, and the distance between each row within its row to determine a northern and eastern coordinate for each tree within the stand. The coordinates for each tree were reported as XY data into the ESRI software ArtMap 10 and a stem map was created containing all trees within the track. Two cruise models were developed using ArtGIS. The first cruise was based off three random plots and a preliminary cruise placed within the stand using the Create Random Plots tool within ArtMap 10. Variance was determined between plots and a sample size cruise percentage in line and plot spacing were determined for 5th acre, 10th acre, and 20th acre plot cruises with an allowable error of 6%. 5th, 10th, and 20th acre plots were selected because they are commonly used in the southeast United States. A second cruise model was based on a 10% inventory for each plot size. The resulting surviving trees per acre estimates were then compared to the figure determined from the 100% cruise to see if the different sampling methods and plot sizes yielded accurate results. The 100% tally resulted in 168 trees per acre. Results from the three cruises based off the preliminary cruise showed the 1 5th acre cruise being the most accurate. 
the 120th acre cruise had the best combination of accuracy and efficiency. It is common in forest inventorying to use 10% cruises. A 10% cruise was used to determine line and plot spacing for each plot size. This cruise simulation showed 120th acre plots to be the most accurate and efficient overall. This experiment supported our hypothesis that silvopasture systems can be effectively and efficiently inventoried using a systematic sampling method. 20th acre plots yielded the most efficient and accurate results within this study. While more research needs to be conducted to substantiate these results, it should be encouraging to landowners wishing to convert their forests to silver pasture systems that 100% tallies aren't necessarily needed to accurately inventory their silvopasture forest stands.